Happy Friday, fam. Welcome back to Morning Coffee with your host, Rick Alexander. You guys can follow me at Rick Alexander underscore on Instagram and at Lionheart Radio. I love to interact with you guys, know when the message resonates. And if you'd be so kind to head to iTunes, give us a five-star review. That would be amazing. Today, I wanted to, uh, I want to talk to you about what if maybe, well, what if you have it all wrong? What if all of the experiences that happen in your life are intended to produce a desired result, but you're reading into the result in the wrong way. You know, despite the best effort of our parents, it's impossible for us to spend our lives inside of a bubble-wrapped world. We are going to be exposed to sharp edges at every turn, and as much as we might resist it, bouncing off of those sharp edges is an integral part of the human experience. It's how we make course corrections that actually have authority within our minds. Truthfully, if I could tell you anything, it would be that failure is just as much a part of the human experience as laughing or crying. Of course, we would rather be gently guided toward the right place in life, but the reality is that most of us get so stuck in our own ways and headstrong on the path that we want that a gentle nudge to where we should be, it's often ignored. This is evident by the myriad of soft nudges that life always gives us before it resorts to catastrophic measures. Typically, a doomed relationship always presents red flags before it falls apart. Only we usually choose to ignore those red flags because, well, we want what we want. At other times, we take a job, yet somewhere deep within us is an unsatisfied feeling. Like maybe this isn't the job that's going to satisfy the soul. A need we can't always articulate, yet we feel on a very visceral level. And I can almost guarantee that everybody listening knows exactly what I mean when I say that because we could really use the money and because we see so many other jobs and other people doing jobs that they don't really love, we justify the position to ourselves and then we continue on. Years down the road when we're laid off, fired or leave because we're so miserable we can't take another second, it feels as though we're bouncing off of those sharp edges. It feels like catastrophe. In reality, we ignored the gentle nudge for so long we left the universe with no choice but to make it hurt. In light of this, I have to stop and wonder what our lives might look like if we actually learned to listen to that intuitive voice telling us not to date that person or to take that job. In truth, that's probably a pointless speculation though, because we are the way we are and humans were made anti-fragile for that reason. We've been developed to grow stronger from what tries to break us and so for better or worse, this is the operating system that we have. As always, our best move, and what I always recommend, isn't to wish reality was different than it is. That's a futile attempt to cope with what threatens to break us. Instead, I'm suggesting that we fine-tune our approach to the sharp edges. To be clear, when I describe the sharp edges, I mean both physically and emotionally. It seems like yearly, if not every few months, most of us learn a really hard lesson. We look around, maybe at the sky if you're so inclined, and we question the course correction. Why me? And why so often does it feel like pain is always one corner away in my life? Honestly, I believe that those are valid questions. Shouldn't you be able to question a world that seems hellbent on bending you to its will? But my question isn't about why we hurt or go through hard times. I believe that I have that part nailed. That's the course correction. My question is, what if you're incorrectly viewing the sharp edges and that's the reason why you keep finding them? On some level, we do have to admit that the quality of our lives is shaped by the quality of our decisions. And if we continue to hit the same roadblocks or similar roadblocks, perhaps without realizing it, we're continuing to make similar decisions. The truth is that every time you are exposed to something painful, you create a narrative around it. Your brain is wired to make sense of the world, and in order to do that, it has to find a reason, quote unquote, for whatever's going wrong. So mentally, if one plus one doesn't equal two, then we're inclined to start spiraling down fast. The problem isn't that we make sense of the world. The real problem is the fact that normally, when we find ourselves amidst catastrophe, we want to find a reason for our pain so badly that we often find the wrong reason. 
Many times we find ourselves blindsided by hard times and with lack of an answer for what went wrong, we search within ourselves for that answer. We place blame on ourselves. And while that blame may be accurate to a degree, right? Like it's always okay to like own something. The way that we react to it is typically wrong. In Western culture, in America specifically, we have the innate desire to make ourselves the star of the show. And we think very egocentrically as if the whole world is revolving around us. But what we forget to think about is the fact that perhaps we are playing a side role in somebody else's film at times. Like when somebody leaves us, perhaps you were just a side role and they were going through something and figuring it out. Now, it's not right for you to own that narrative and then take that on and feel as if it was something that you did wrong. You always want to learn from your mistakes, but you want to make sure that you're not emphasizing the wrong part of the lesson. You know, I'll share something like deeply personal. Like I went through this breakup and the person I was dating used to always say, um, people come in your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. And I used to cringe because... I wanted it to be a lifetime and I used to have this like nagging feeling like, but maybe, maybe I'm only here for a season. See what I was failing to realize in all of that, that she was actually in my life for a reason, but it's really easy to add the wrong emphasis because we want what we want and we get tunnel vision around that. One of the most difficult parts of the human condition and the human experience is to wade back through all that you are and discover what has been conditioned and learned and what is innately you. But what I want to draw your attention to isn't what you learned. The most important part of any interaction is to realize that you learned. That much of who you are, including the story in your head, is all learned. And as such, you can make changes as it fits your life. For example, you might find that you've been a certain way for a really long time. And that way got you to a certain point in life. Now, the best thing you can do for your future is to understand what you learned that is no longer serving you. Case in point, beating yourself up for that breakup, that business failure, that friendship that ended or whatever it is in your life that you've created a negative story around. It can be profoundly liberating to realize that not only did you get it wrong, but that you still have the power to get it right. You guys have an incredible weekend. As always, I love you. I'll talk to you on Monday on Morning Coffee. Well, you think this life would make me bolder. But I'm running scared is all Well I hang on everything about you You think I'd settle down cause I'm older But I roll with the changes all Well I'm same old trailer trash in new shoes Like I want to Yeah
Yeah, but I stay how much too late.